podcast. Like the the people, it just it's so exciting. I there's a dance party at the common, and I was just spinning around a circle, looking at the sky, just living in the moment. It is so much fun, dude. The 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 the, the, the pinball machines, there's Elvira pinball. There's like a, there's a pinball machines. That, there's a well, there's a restaurant that's called like a, a, the Bit Bar, and, yeah. and it's got all the video games. It's, it's I'm sorry, I've gone the fuck down, but I'm nah, bro, keep guys. going, keep going. Dude, Tell did, us all did, about it. Let us live vicariously. I, I did you. not, but dude, this is my second time in a month, and I'm telling you, it was just awesome. And and never mind, I, I don't know if you guys saw my outfit that I wore and like the videos and shit. I was a complete punk rocker and stuff. Like people kept, oh telling yeah, me. they said they love the fit. I got quite a bit of compliments. But my kids got their face painted like craziness. The commons are awesome. The streets are chaos. There is just people. It is insane. I saw Pennywise. Like the dude. Hey, dude, dude George. just even walking through the mall is fun. Like, please. I just I don't want to know what this feeling feels and not have you guys know it. Like, I want you guys to feel what I feel. Like, it's, like you, it's like you just had sex for the first time. <sighs> I was I just like... gonna say, I feel like we're in high school and we're all gathered around a table. <laughs> oh and he's like, guys, dude, dude. I made penetration. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I like, I don't know, man. My heart was like fluttering. Like a few times, yeah. I screamed when I saw Pennywise from a distance. I screamed, then, I like, and I then like, you cried. Yeah, and my wife like she flinched. I'm like, I'm sorry. I do realize I'm a big kid, but it, it's just I'm telling you, man. There is stuff for every single person. You you just. Oh, you just have to. I have like reverse FOMO. Like I have FOMO for you guys. Like I don't even know if that's a thing. I don't even know what's even talking about. But I'm just please go. Oh, I, dude, I, I plan you. on it. I plan on it so bad. Like the only reason why we didn't bring the kids this year because they're finally old enough, I think, to enjoy it. Is yeah. we've been doing a ton of work on the house. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So if if anyone hears anything, uh, like any banging or anything like that, it's uh they're doing work in the kitchen. All right, gotcha. All right. Oh, yeah, let's calm me down. They got, let's just they got, they got consent, right? Yeah. Oh. They they definitely have consent. Justin, there is no calming down on this episode because Hack Stab Slash, welcome back. It's your boys, Hacky Stagby, and, and some dude just Justin, doing things down there. Doing things. Let's fucking go. Ah! Some guy. We're going to have a freeform episode where we're going to tell you guys about movies that we love to watch in the month of October leading up to Halloween. They don't have to be Halloween adjacent. They're just movies that we thoroughly enjoy and feel the need to watch prepping for Halloween. And, uh, dude, guys, I I am ready to go script free and just have a fucking blast. Complete. Let's let rambles. the audience get to know us. Complete rambles think, and shambles. Yeah, dude, I think Justin just murdered the intro, just going ham about what kind of a you know epic weekend he's having out in Salem, oh. Mass. That's just that's just one percent of Justin's uh craziness right there. You I actually did not. I'm literally looking. I'm like, guys, we aren't recording, and we are recording. I didn't even realize. Are, oh god, yeah. it's embarrassing. That's why I didn't want you to stop, dude. It's not embarrassing. <laughs> I, that energy you just gave off, dude, and the pure excitement is one of the that. main drives why we do this podcast. Yeah, go to Salem, everyone. If anyone, I didn't even realize. Like, I wasn't doing that for the pod. I was actually just excited for them. So, like, I guess no. Go to no, Salem no, no. for real. Like, it's, dude, it's, oh, yeah. it just just the way you went yeah. off. There was no way in hell oh. I was not gonna come on here and not hit record and share that excitement with our listeners and be part of the art like i dressed up like a crazy person my kids got their face painted i mean i had like i went full punk rocker vest i got look i can't even get the fake tattoos on off if you saw that i still have part of my fake sleeves on i can't even get it off like look it won't come off but anyway it's just 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 go to salem i guess that's just the point and like he's not kidding guys when you dress up for things like this it makes the experience yeah tenfold like, oh, yeah. I mean, something similar, but not Halloween adjacent is I brought the boys to the King Richard's Fair and I let them dress up. It was all our first times. We all dressed up and it was a fucking blast, dude. Like, I, I want to go again. And if Salem is anything like that, I cannot oh. wait to go. Yeah, it go sounds all a in. lot more hardcore. It's insane. Like, dude, I saw I, I, I'm not even going to re- recap because apparently you guys were recording me. <laughs> but yeah, just go. Just go. Just go. Just, just go. Just go. Justin. Just go. Just, just giving Justin, you advice. Just, so just, just, things just, to just do. go. Just, just. Dude. All right. Salem was so. I, <laughs> Hold on, guys. I got to pee. Oh, I'm, I'm, I... And luckily, there's a lot of porta potties in Salem now because I'm not going to lie, man. I had to pee like 100 times. Like, whew. I That's peed so much, Jesus. guys. <laughs> So much. It's so All much right. about adult diapers. No All shame right. who's it, that. Where's who's adult diapers? Who's signing this off first? Yeah, you wore bo- bro, boxes or briefs? Depends. Yeah. 
I got no clue of the order. Where are we going first? What All is right. even happening? So I have a small list on my phone, Hackstab Slash. We elected to go with four movies each that we're just going to give quick thoughts on. No official reviews, no nothing. We're just going to shoot the shit about it. And then at the end of the episode for our 13th movie is going to be next week's selection. And that's going to be kicked off by Waterboy. Waterboy, do you want to tell us a little bit about the sequel to your forearm? Huh. Oh, Waterboy is starting off. <laughs> right? Yeah. So uh, yeah. there's so, lots so of lights and pick. sounds and some scenes with some scenes Ooh. and lights and sounds behind the I've scenes that make such, the scenes very lighty and very soundy. Such sights to show you, Sean. We got uh, so, Hellraiser <laughs> 2. Coming in. Um, it's it's one of my favorite movie uh favorite movies. Um not a lot of people like it, of course. But it was I, watching it back in the day. The first one I originally saw, but after I saw the second one. 100 times better than the first one. It actually has a story compared to the first one, which is just fucked up. Yeah. I just have a question to ask. I thought it was a high five. No, I just have a question for uh, Waterboy just to help. uh, Why does Hellraiser resonate with you? And like, why do you like about it? Um, I I just. So I'm like a more like a like a creature type person. Like I'm I'm like a blood and guts type of guy. And just that little aspect of like everything, like the special effects that they use in most of the films um it it's a it's a gross out factor and that and that's what i what i like in a horror movie honestly i'm, I'm, your, a, uh, I'm, a, I'm a weird guy yeah I, all right i'm i'm drawing a blank because i, I do enjoy hellraiser what what are they called again cinnabites, cinnabites. right Cinnabites. cinnabites. Right, so, yep. so what, what's your favorite cinnabon <laughs> uh probably the chatterer i was gonna say that i swear to god i feel like everyone says chatter or or a meat or a meatball, which is a hilarious name for one. There's but, one um, called meatball. I've seen the first three, and on, but I don't remember. Like I'm like, or but not not meatball, butterball. That's his name. Butterball. butterball. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. stop. So I'm Justin, sure I'll I'm... give you a hit. There's yeah. an incredibly fat cinnabite. Do yeah. you think his name is Butterball? <laughs> that must be Butterball. I've seen, like I said, Dude. I've seen the first three Hell Rages, but I don't remember like I'm, I'm that much of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna screen share this for you guys just so you can see it. Hold on. Let's see uh, if it pops you, up. While you do that, dude, uh, the Cinnabites scared the shit out of me as a kid. And like, scary. I fucking love the whole aspect of Pinhead, you know, uh, Butterball, like all those guys. I think it's amazing. But the storylines oh, in those dude. movies just crush yeah. me. Isn't that, isn't that fucking nuts? <laughs> fucking yeah, gross, okay. gross out to shit, dude. They got freaking Halloween costumes with this guy. Yeah, I've seen that guy. I just didn't know that's what his name was. And then, of course, this guy is just like fr- it. Fr- this guy freaked me yeah. out. I'm just Ch- gonna, chatter he, gives me the nerves. He this this is what scared the shit out of me when I was a kid when I watched this. It was this guy right here. Yeah, but yeah, that's uh, that's that. Uh, that's why that resonates with me. Gotcha. And I asked that question because I'm just curious. Like horror is super subjective, and for whatever reason, like I watched the first Hellraiser couldn't get into it at all I yeah the first one the first three and i just i don't know for whatever reason like pinhead looks cool just the story just did not suck me in at all i was just i don't know i it, it did nothing for me at all and yeah. but i mean pinhead looks creepy and and people hey, like friggin love it so i mean that's why i was just that's really that's the curious. awesome part of horror i wore like any movies yeah. in general it's like everybody that's why yeah, everyone's so many different got their types. own oh yeah yeah everyone's got their own like niche you know what I mean? And if you're not into Hellraiser and you don't like Cinnabons with frosting, which I oh, think are delicious so, when you're at a mall so kiosk good. and the kids are going nuts and you just need something sweet to hit that tooth. But Auntie um, Anne's cinnamons. Oh, oh so good. God, don't even get me going. Uh, but if you don't like Cinnabites, maybe you like vampires. And uh, on my list, That's I've got movie. Lost Boys. I've got Lost Boys, boys. <laughs> Lost God. Boys, boys. I got Lost Boys, boys. Lost Boys, this, boys. This movie made me want to move to California as a kid. It made me want to go live on a pier and like it, seek out the cool bad boys. And oh, dude, I, 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 I'm not gonna lie, dude. I joined band to learn how to play a brass instrument after watching that man murder the saxophone. Absolutely crush it. I mean, how many people make a saxophone that cool? Yeah. And this movie it, did it. It's the gang you definitely want to join. Yeah, exactly, and, dude. Like, how could you just deny that? <laughs> oh, and the feeling of being a part of like the crew, like you said, yeah, watching that movie, like you just, it just, it's so badass, and you just want to like, hold on to that, like, yeah, dude, like a, the underground so cave. 
Ah. It do, that's the epic layer. Like, oh, I want, I want that. I want to be part of that. You know, if I there's a horror movie that someone was like, you can go spend 24 hours living inside of, it might be Lost Boys for me. I, that, no, that's, I need I to rewatch this movie. movie. I, I was about thing. to say it. I haven't I, seen this movie in years. So I love this movie and I, it's a cult favorite. People watch it all the time. And I did love this movie. It's awesome. But I've also haven't seen it for so long long i i need to like i need to do better i need to rewatch this movie mm, it, maybe, it we'll, is, maybe we'll bring it to life this month who knows it's awesome yeah. it's awesome you know it, it, one of my favorite scenes and i got very daredevil as a kid is when they're hanging from the tracks yes yes and they fall into the fog mm-hmm. uh i love it and then just the transition of him falling into bed beautiful so the soundtrack really- too I was just gonna say the oh. music. You can't even mention this movie oh. without talking about you the music. Can't. It's so good, dude. Mm. I, and oh, so like, oh, sorry, I'm just, there's a lot of <laughs> no, 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 oh. go, go, go. No, like, this, like you said, like what I do about like the cinematography. Like some of the shots look so badass, and you have the '80s nostalgia and like just the feeling of including in like that underground scene is so awesome, and just the music, the soundtrack is so bad. It to this day, it's so popular, and just people are just so, loving those that music. So, who's your favorite? And the Lost Boys, me? Yeah, who's your? Do you want your... Do you want? I will give you one guess. Is it Keith Sutherland? <laughs> yeah, of course. Dude. Know, the, the leader, dude, he's just badass. The, oh, the best. It's, it's the either best. that. Or, what, what's uh, his name? Ju- from Justin's is, uh, Justin's is Corey Feldman. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's another thing, dude. This is prime, <laughs> the, like the Corys. This is like oh, the, yeah, yeah. part of their peak movie, like Stand by Me with uh Corey Feldman and like we just watched Silver Bullet and like this is oh, this yeah. is prime yep. the Corys and this is before their downfall before like everything just got incredibly weird but uh, <laughs> and, Corey, it, and, and if you really it. guys want to watch um you can still see Corey Feldman and uh, playing in his band it's really good <laughs> uh, I just yeah uh, and his Michael Jackson attire just that's another so- thing dude like the comic book store in the beginning yeah. How could you? I I want to go there. I want to open up that store so I can go there. We need more stores like that. All right. All right. Next up on our list, we've got a movie picked by Justin. And what happens when you get scared? When someone scares you, do you typically scream? Oh, I was gonna say I forgot what movie I picked. Where are we going? Of course, you forgot what movie. You I, picked. I know. I was like, I was like, I hope Sean knows. No, I. I just... We got through twenty six movies on our list to do in season one, and then after that, you're like, whose pick is it? Yeah, it's mine. I, it's Wait, lot, what do I got left? Confusing. Like Justin, you've got one movie left. All right, I don't <laughs> even know how. All right, I'm gonna. What I'm happens? Gonna, I watch Scream every single October. <laughs> um, scre- all the screams. And do, I'm just do you watch to, like, it every November, December? Yeah, you so know, that's I'm January, trying to like, I do too. Right. 12 months. There's yeah. a lot of excitement in me right now, so I'm trying to process my thoughts because I know we're only going to talk about this for a few minutes, and I'm just trying to talk about what. Oh man, I, I, sorry, I'm like overwhelmed. I can't even speak. The I don't know. Do your heart ever flutter when you watch a movie? Like the love I have for this movie is freaking unreal. Like I'm trying to control myself. I love this movie. My favorite final girl in history of horror for a long time was Laurie Strode. Just love love Halloween, my favorite series. But Sydney Prescott. I love her so much. Her character arc through everything is just so incredible. And the characters in this movie, you know what? Look at this I love this movie so much because of the characters. There's it's too exciting. I can't even help myself. I'm sorry. But Sydney Prescott is so awesome. And the two killers, like Billy and Stu, like they're so awesome. The ending, all I have to say is the ending of Scream. You cannot watch this ending of Scream. Stu. I'm feeling a little woozy here. Like I'm feeling Stu. a little woozy here. Awesome. Stu's it's, awesome. It's it so is. great. And and honestly, I've been called so many times, like, Randy. Let's just talk about Randy Meeks. I love Randy so much. The scene when they're watching Halloween, when they're watching He's they're right watching behind Halloween you. He's they're... behind you. Turn around. <laughs> Wes Craven is so awesome. The characters are so awesome. It's, oh, my God. Dale <laughs> and Dewey. Just, I love all the characters. Sorry, someone else talk about this movie for a second. What Dude, do you guys feel? Wes, Wes Craven <laughs> took Meta Horror with this movie to the pinnacle of Meta Horror. It's never seen heights like Scream has portrayed for us. That set the fucking bar through the roof. And when I say like Easter eggs and all that stuff that's littered throughout the movie, one of my favorites that most people don't talk about, but you guys might have seen the picture floating around online. It's of all the characters when they're sitting at the fountain talking. Hmm. And if you look at their shoes, two of them 
are wearing the black boots, the same as the killer throughout the series, uh, yep. throughout the movie. Excuse me. Oh yeah, like, so, just, like, so much he great tells time, you yeah. who the killers are, but you have to pay attention to the very minute details throughout oh, yeah. the entire movie. And dude, just the kills like crawling through the doggy door. We all know that's I, not going to work. Yeah. There is there not was- a single garage door <laughs> in the history of mankind that can lift a grown ass woman with double D's. The char- yeah, Tatum, like these characters are all awesome. Like Tatum's death scene in that is just so incredible. Just the hell them watching Halloween. I'm pretty sure uh Wes Craven is dressed as Freddy Krueger in like a shirt as the G- custodian. There's like a quick flash of like this yeah. like, hidden like Freddy Krueger li- in there. He's wearing there's, the whole outfit. Yeah, there's so much stuff in here, and just the the how creepy like uh Billy and Stu are at the end. Just like Billy is just so creepy. Stu is ridiculous. Just the quotes at the end of the movie, just I don't know. It's there's so many lovable characters, and I find that's really rare when this. Like, we have Henry fucking Winkler, right? As the principal. Principal, there's there's so much goodness in this, and then never mind. This came out when I was like, well, it was ninety. I was like a real early like teen, like this just, is ninety six. I was eight yeah. years old. Yeah, I was thirteen. So, and I mean, I, I probably didn't see it right away. I probably saw it when I was like 14, 15 or something. So it's just like the nostalgia I have for this movie is just, it's just unrivaled. And that's, I'm just going to stop talking about that. You know, when, um, when Stu gets stabbed or what, um, he, uh, it reminded me of that scene that's going to be on one of the movies that's on our list right here with the uh, house on Haunted Hill Yo, and nice where, where she stabs him, um, when she gets up off the table to try to frame him for the murdering. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what that, that's what that reminded me of. It's almost like a little trope to that. I think I feel like, but, and then dude house on the haunted Hill. Like we talked about it when we covered the episode, if you guys want to hear all about it, go back and look at it. It's season one, episode 16, I believe. Sure. I'm not mistaken. No if if you got that right. I'm if I got that right. Uh, yeah. If I Bro, got that right, dude, pass on back. That. That's a, it's just a shot in the dark. I think it's episode sixteen. I think it was right in the middle. How would you even? I mean, I, I'll, I'll look it up too, real quick. Episode sixteen's Idle Hands. Ah, damn it! Oh, was it? Oh, fuck. yeah. House on Haunted Hill, episode eight. Oh wow, that was so, we did it early on. Yeah, I felt like we did it a little later. But dude, like <clears throat> that movie when we talked about it, the CGI at the time scared yeah. the fuck out of me. The, the kills, sh- the shaking, the like, like shaking, oh. like the the music when the doctor walks by the camera and like glitches. Yes. Oh. That freaking dude! I when I, I saw it in theaters, dude. So yes. that this one, like you asked about movies resonating with me. That one, my first mm. horror movie I ever saw in theaters was that in 1999. Was this and one? It, yeah, and it oh, that's so badass. Fuck out, dude. Oh yeah, no first horror movies in theaters. Like I wish I even knew what mine was. That's so cool <laughs> that you act. Like, oh, that's badass. When he's so, in the uh, the the. What is it that the madman cycle thing, like the 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 chamber, when yeah, it was like when you drive a madman, when you can drive a sane man mad, so you can drive a madman mad sane, sane, like that thing. Mm-hmm. When he's in there, I had nightmares from that one scene. None of the kills, nothing like that, nothing yeah. did me in. But mm-hmm. that particular scene, dude, I was afraid to close my eyes for like a year whenever I saw a strobe light or a blinking light or like a, a motion sensor came on yeah. or anything like that. It scared the shit out of me. Dude, that, no, yeah, a, that that, it's that great sound. Pick. It's, it's a great I know, pick. I know, I know it's not a good, like a, not it, a great the, the movie. The effects like... didn't hold up. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, no, the it, practical exactly. in the it, movie is still good, but the, the yeah. CGI did not hold up. But then, if I went downstairs right now and this movie was on my TV, I hundred percent watching it. And never mind, oh, yeah. like, what's that name? Famke Johansson. I don't even know what her name is. Famke like, Jansen. Yeah, just oh my god, just incredible. And dude, Chris Kattan in this movie yeah. was so awesome. Perfect. Walking. Uh, and there was like you said, like creepy parts. I don't know. This movie's fun. We're I mean, all gonna die. I'm it. gonna get drunk. Yeah, no, I. It's this is definitely it's a good. It's so much fun. Great thing. Great. Thing. And the don't kills. You get and, it? Every single one of the kills in this movie is brutal, perfect. Even the fake kills are good. Even yeah. the fake outs are great. Yep. Love this movie. Uh, great pick. Great uh, pick. Oh my gosh. Uh, all where, right. are going, where are we going? I, next? I, I, I sort of screwed Where are we up going the list? next, dude? <laughs> he did. He did. He jumped it. He jumped a little bit down, but I, I'll forgive you, Waterboy. Thank you. Uh, I'll jump back up to the top, but we're going to stay in the 90s with some original horror movies that scared the absolute shit out of us 
that people may not like anymore or just never liked in general. And that's Halloween six, the curse of Michael oh, Myers. Boy. Oh, I, this boy. is my pick. This is my pick. I know a lot of people hate this movie and they think it's stupid and they can't stand the, you know, Jamie had a baby and they live next door and all this stuff. But when I was a kid, I told Justin this water boy, when I was a kid, my mom, this is one of the first movies they let me rent from Blockbuster because I was becoming obsessed with horror at a young age. I brought this downstairs and I put it in my 32 inch TV, VCR, DVD combo setup in the basement. Love those things. All the lights on, middle of the day, everyone's home. I could not make it past the bus station scene. It was so fucking scary that I shut it off and I ran upstairs and I refused to watch it until we returned it. And then my brothers got it and they agreed to sit down and watch it with me. And this movie scared the shit out of me i never wanted to do laundry by myself again i never wanted to go out my backyard again every time i heard my dogs bark they had to come to me i would not go to them i did not like bus stations uh, and then and then it, what, what makes this movie so 90s besides like the way it's shot and all like the hokey pokey back and forth dj hanging from a tree upside down and dead and naked in a fucking you know raincoat is do you guys remember every time he's in a chase and it's on like Jamie or it's on someone, it's like the creepy music. And then when it goes back to Michael Myers, someone out of nowhere comes in with like a heavy guitar riff and it's like a heavy guitar riff. riff. It's like, <laughs> yeah. That scared the shit Just, out of me as a kid. It doesn't now. It makes me giggle. But a little jump scared. Same. Um, All right. So I want to talk about this real fast. Um, Halloween, my favorite series ever. And we won't even talk about how like screwed up and ridiculous the storyline gets in these movies. But Halloween 6 is very similar to Sean. I watched this really young, too, when I was getting obsessed with the series. And that bus station scene stays with me to this day. If I'm in a place like that, like in the bathroom or something, to this day, I think of that. So, so scary. And like I, said, I watched the movie young, too, and it, it some of the scenes really did scare me, like going downstairs in the basement with the laundry. I second that 100%. And this movie did have some great imagery, though, of just Halloween and stuff. Just like the, I remember them, they were like set up outside and this, I don't even know, like a fair or something. And Halloween, yeah. Stuff. But yeah, but like when I get this picture of Michael Myers walking down the hallway, like you said, and it's just like crazy guitar, like screeching, <laughs> like almost like industrial. I don't know about you, but from that opening scene when the nurse is like, run. I'll mm -hmm. like I, I'll distract him. I'll give you some time to get away. Ugh. When he picks her up and he puts her head through a fucking spike on the wall, every hallway I went down, schools included, I would look at the walls to make sure there was nothing someone could pick me up and stick me on. Dude, yeah. I will say this was a violent. My oh sorry, go ahead, Water Boy. I was gonna say like I have, I have mental things of that as well. Like just anytime I see something like even sharp a little bit on on the walls or anything like that i'm like holy shit if i like accidentally trip or something or like it yeah it's it's a it's a bad fear this was a violent michael myers like one of the more violent ones we saw obviously not including like when they like the later date ones like when he decides going nuts but this was a super violent michael myers in this movie and this is one of the like the movies that he plays with all his victims there's other movies when like he kills them and like he stages them and stuff, but some yeah. some of them he doesn't like either have time or just doesn't show interest because he's too focused on getting, you know, Jamie or Laurie or someone like that. But I feel like in this movie he stages every single kill he has. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say is just rest in peace, Donald Pleasance, um, Doctor Loomis. This was his last movie uh, in the franchise. Um, so I just want to say that. What's wild, too, is where this was his last movie. Um, I believe in the movie, he was also retired. Like, he, yes, was, he was telling, yeah, he was, he was telling uh -huh. us in the movie as well, in that storyline, he was all done with Michael. He's retired. He wants nothing to do with it. He was really old in this movie. All right, Justin. Just in all right, you know tell me I mean? where I'm going. Tell me where I'm going. You where know, going? since this movie is just a, a joke in the franchise, why don't you tell us a little bit about things that make us laugh, like killer clowns from out of space? Oh, my God. All right. So, uh, killer. <laughs> such a good pick, dude. <laughs> have you guys seen this movie? Uh, my kids have even seen this movie. <laughs> all right, Sean, you've seen it, right? <sighs> Wait. You, you, this is one of those movies where I've seen huge chunks and always had something come up 
Like I remember the beginnings. I haven't watched this oh. movie in a long time. I remember the beginning. I remember like the cotton candy scenes and all that stuff. But I've oh, never not seen, seen this end movie. Of this movie. This oh is like- my god! All right, yeah. So all right, so I picked this movie because I would rewatch this all the time in October because I love eighty slashers and my favorite eighties well, horror is my favorite thing ever, and I love cheesy B movies. And this is as cheesy as B movies as they come. But at the same time, it is thoroughly entertaining. Like, you are not bored. It just keeps getting more ridiculous, more ridiculous. From the opening scene when you see, like, a comet or something flying and, and it crashes and they go investigate. And there's a circus tent? Dude. There's a yeah. circus tent. The only thing the... I'm thinking of is when he's yeah. uh, boxing. <laughs> oh, trust me. I I wrote, like, four things just to make I, – I wrote that just because in case I got too excited, I wanted to make sure I talked about that. And never mind, like, these clowns' names. Like, you got Slim, Jumbo, Rudy, Spike, like – Shorty Fatso, and all right, I love Shorty. Like I said, I haven't seen this movie all the way through, but Shorty yeah. is my favorite. Well, Shorty has one of the best. Let's just talk about what Waterboy said. Like, there's the boxing scene. I'm pretty sure too. He starts bo- he jumps up and like there's a flip, but he like lands down, and all of a sudden he's got like boxing gloves on. And I'm pretty sure the guy he's boxing said something like, "What are you gonna knock my block off or something?" And he punches his head, and then his head goes flying off, and I'm pretty sure it lands in a trash barrel. Like it lands in a trash barrel. This is Sean. What do you got? All right. Uh, it, it, via like comparison, who had the greater headshot? The opening scene in Silver Bullet or Shorty's boxer punch? Right. They both were modded. Like, the, I only it's... give it to Shorty because it landed in a trash barrel. Like, right. if that way, if, if the werewolf and Silver Bullet did, bullet did it, he would get it too. <laughs> but I mean, some of the kills in this, it's just, and then never mind the music. I can't, like, the theme by the Dude, Dickies, they have their the own theme band, song, bro. The, like, but the punk, punk band, the Dickies. Awesome song. Every single person knows that. You have, do you remember the scene when they like deliver, like the girls like waiting and they deliver pizza and like the three clowns like arrive at the door with like the pizza and like I'm pretty sure they open the pizza box and there's like another one of them. Yeah. They shoot people with cotton candy guns. At, at the very end, I don't know if you remember the kill. It's towards the end of the movie, like one of the police officers, they have like pies and they throw pies at this guy and like the pies like melt his face and the dude ends up getting melted by like pies thrown at him. I so like, good. Oh my god, we need to actually like do there's, a whole there's, episode of this. Spaceship is a fucking tent, dude. It's I cannot wait to cover this movie. That's the thing. We are uh, like that's all I'm gonna say on this. I, I honestly so much... will say I, I think this is oh, the one more. most Sorry. famous B horror movie. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, well, I'm the amount what... just in like where's the t-shirts, the hoodies, your usual it's, usual coffee go to. I mug usually have a coffee is, mug. Yeah. I feel like when you say you love B class horror movies, it's this must be like an eighty nine point nine 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 nine. Yeah, I would. Re- it would break B-movie. my ratings, especially because there's another part. I think I don't get me quoted. It, like maybe Slim the Clown, if Waterboy, you might remember. He's doing. It's so stupid. He's on the streets doing shadow puppets. He's doing magic yes. for people. I remember He's this doing- one. And it turns into like a T Rex. Yeah, and, and he eats him, right? He eats the it guy. Eats yes, yes, I people. remember that part. Like, <laughs> who even writes that? Like, are you kidding me, dude? Or that, or it, they ran a puppet show, and they're like, and then the puppet it, turns and like has a gun on. Him. It's in, just oh my god! Just this movie is unbelievable, and that's all I got to say. We'll take it, kick it back over. To, and any final thoughts on this one, and then we'll kick it over to. Such just a, that I cannot wait to cover this movie. Yeah, we gotta. I don't even remember what movies we picked to actually podcast this month. I do. We, we did not them? pick anything yet. Besides, we, we have treat, one right? movie. Waterboy picked Trick or Treat. Did me and Sean not pick ours? I you think I might know it. where I'm going, but uh, you oh, spoiled yeah. it, you son huh? of a bitch. Anyway, kick it over to Waterboy. It's usually me who does that. <laughs> All right, you want to tell us a little bit about it, Waterboy? Uh, what you liked about it? I you liked it a lot. It. I liked it a lot. Um, so it, of course, the old it, not the new one. The, the new OG, one is, not the new one. The OG, the OG. Um, Tim fucking Curry, dude. Oh, uh, murders this, it. So good. This movie also scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. I had an irrational fear of clowns after that. Um, <laughs> horrible. But this this movie was absolutely amazing. Tim Curry killed this role. And the fact that, like, I still remember this movie, like, being two VHS films because it was so freaking yeah, long. So long. He also and killed a lot of kids. He did. <laughs> he did, he did kill a lot of kids. <laughs> you Georgie. Yeah. So scary. Uh, the, 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 this movie was absolutely amazing. And, if I mean, I, everybody must have seen this movie already. Oh, yes. Um, if you If you haven't, then I don't know what you're doing. 
Um, but what do you what do you guys uh, think of this? Which one do you like better? Actually, you like the newer uh, one, like the OG. So I do like the newer one better. I did watch this as a kid, and trust me, it is so scary. The whole overall story of this is just terrifying, and especially kids. Like how can you, how can you not be terrified of this? I did rewatch this a while ago. I don't think it held up super good. I don't. I didn't love it as much as I remember, but still, I mean, it doesn't take. It, the story is still so great, and Tim Curry, holy crap! Like that, that dude is unbelievable. I did like the newer one, but oh my, it's it's so scary. It's it's so scary. What do you think, Sean? Stephen King. This is a novel for the ages, guys. When I get tired of listening to podcasts and music, there's yeah. two books on audio that I have on my phone that I consistently and constantly listen to. It's It and The Shining. Dude, it is just a whole nother level of horror. I've never been scared of clowns, but I was scared of Pennywise watching this movie for the first time. And I watched the OG for the first time when I was a child. And Mm. I think what scared me more than anything wasn't the fact that this was a clown chasing kids. It was a clown coming back and taking on adults and making them so scared of a child, what they went through as children, children. that they basically revert back to children. Mm. Yeah. And, like and, I, I, I've out of all the horror movies I've ever seen, I've seen grown ups be scared, run, frightened, but never revert to back to being like scared as a kid, and yeah, then having but, to battle back from that. It just makes it such an epic storyline. Like especially going back to that, like when he when he hears it, and then he gets back to like starts to stu- stutter. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it was... knocks the stutter right back into him. I, I yep. just think that's wild and such a great, you know thing to add, not only add to a movie but to have in the book that this kid overcomes stuttering but then immediately sees this clown and like remembers stuff and just this is like it's stuck all right hey so let's talk about that real fast that's so cool because like i always talk about like you see people going through life like serious and stuff and like people forget everyone has that inner child in them like you gotta some people are better at tapping in and still having fun as an adult like you gotta tap into the inner child like you almost use it for the good this movie did like the reverse now that i think about it yeah. like everyone when you're a kid like people have that irrational fear right you're afraid of the doc you're afraid of all this stuff like you have like the like the inner child fear and stuff and like you said i never even thought of that like that's insane like it like reverted back to like the child like fear and stuff so that's that's pretty cool i just Randomly it's it's crazy how your brain works. It's like almost like you you can see something, a certain smell, or he- yeah. hearing anything, and like it takes you back to a certain nostalgia. You can picture right. a time when you first saw that, tasted it, or anything for the first time. It's crazy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. It just cool. like the practical effects in this movie, top fucking notch, top notch. And one of the things that scared me the most, I don't know if you remember when he started laughing. And he just like kept opening his mouth, oh, dude. Ugh. And then, and then even even like the subtle, like imagery and and the camera work and just the background music and like the soundtrack played throughout this movie is a horror character of its own. When he's standing down in uh, where do they play around like that that. The field and the sewers and like all that shit where it all meets. Yeah, that that's another the thing quarry, that, got me that was it. The quarry. Yeah, I get. I can sewers, dude. Yeah, it's, I I can't I can't think of what it's called, but where they they're down there and they're looking around and he looks back and it's Tim Curry just holding the balloons and oh, laughing that, at him. Oh, so creepy. That's such a cool scene. Oh, <laughs> like when they're in the library. And the balloons with blood start popping on everybody's face. Oh, and... that was that was awesome. And yeah, yeah. and no one reacts like. Is your Dude, refrigerator running? Well, you oh, hey, I, just, I, I forgot something. I haven't seen it too. Like, no, I knew it too. I just really? realized that it was too long. I'm not good at sitting still, so I haven't. Like, what do you just like recommend? Is it really it. good? Should I watch it? Yeah, watch. Oh, it for sure, oh, dude. yeah, dude. 100%. The opening scene is gonna rope you in, and you're, you're gonna be hooked right off the rip. I, they like, don't. They long- waste zero time getting into it. Now there is a darker side of uh, like uh, of of it that happens with you know the kids and the girl of course i don't know if you guys ever read up into that but it's a little yeah, well, he, little weird yeah, yeah i heard it guess for jackson yeah. was telling me what i heard yeah. it's a little messed up but um we won't talk about if, that <laughs> yeah if you guys have a chance and anyone out there if you don't want to watch this movie and you do like i do like i do enjoy a good audiobook while i'm working because we walk all day and i just have my headphones in the it novel is fucking unreal and the amount of detail that goes into it and they break down 
it from front to back. Pennywise has done so much shit. And that series that's coming out, that's going to go backwards and away from the group of kids and tackle Pennywise back in uh, like the, the prohibition days. There's that storyline. There's also more storylines that tie Pennywise into the shining universe, which is fucking wild. I, d- I, I don't know if you guys know anything about that. No, I'm, I'm almost sure like it's Stephen King stuff. Like it's, 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 I have it's a feeling its, like own, it's universe. its own universe. I was gonna say it's like yeah, it's a lot of stuff that gets connected. But oh, all right, guys. Right. So up next on the agenda, if you go back and listen to season one, episode nineteen, you will hear all three of us get massively hyped up reviewing a reboot remake of one of the most epic zombie movies out there, George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead Boys. I love this. Love I watched this movie not only like through the Halloween month, dude, but I watch this whenever I'm bored and I want to yeah. watch something that I don't have to pay a lot of attention to. Even mm-hmm. when I want to put background noise on when the kids aren't home and I, I just need something to do. Dawn of the Dead is my go to for everything. That is called a comfort movie, my friend. That is my go. comfort movie. That is a uh, dude. If, if Dawn of the Dead 2004 became like a kitty blanket when I was a child, that would be what do they call it? Like a moo moo, like a, a, a snuggie. <laughs> Like that, yeah. that would be my, my teddy bear to bring to bed every night. This is Very one of well the played. first movies I bought on DVD for myself when I was a kid. One of mine, too. Once I started <laughs> making it. a little bit of money, this one of the first it, ones I bought. I have, I looked at my DVD collection the other day and I saw my old uh, one of this. Yeah. So, yeah. you guys only have one, right? Because my dumb ass has like three or four. Because every time <laughs> we like move around or I can't find it, I just buy another one. <laughs> I, I, I just got, the, I got the original and I got this one. So, I just got uh, one of each. And then, like, the opening scenes, like we talked about in that episode, just the camera work, the Johnny Cash song, it's just, it it grips you, and it pulls you in, and it gives you the storyline front to back, and you've got multiple storylines you can follow through this, and uh, just the camera work, the zombies, the slow decay of the zombies from the beginning when they're, they're red, they're freshly torn up, they're bleeding everywhere into... You know, the the states of decomposition as you go further and further into the movie, their blood's clotting. They're not even bleeding anymore. But you know what yeah. I mean? Like, they're, they're basically falling apart, but the blood's so coagulated that it doesn't make a mess. And that's sort so, of like Walking Dead took that uh, took that upon them because as the seasons go for The Walking Dead, they also change the zombies as well to reflect the time. Yeah. Which is awesome. Love that. Yeah, off and the then, top of my head, I, uh, like, this is definitely one of my favorite horror remakes of all time. I it might even be my first. I can't even think just off the top of my head. But no matter what, it's in my top three. Just because even off the like the beginning scene when like that girl is in the bedroom and it's like at the when the door opens from the second that happens, the movie just takes it's just chaos. She looks so creepy and they're like, "What the hell?" And she just runs in there and bites the guy and it's just absolute chaos. Like. And then the next whole time it is just this movie that whole, is the awesome. whole beginning scene. It's just it's just awesome. It's changed it's how just, I looked it's all. zero to 150 and like oh, yeah. and they give you so little time to actually develop a storyline with these characters, but they do it so well that you get hooked. Like Anna, right off the rip, we see she's overworked, she's incredibly tired, but she's still nice and she cares about her job and she cares about her co-workers. To the point where, like, she's flirting with the secretary, like, not flirting with the secretary, but talking to the secretary about the dude she's flirting with and trying to get him hooked up. The doctor tells her, like, brushes her off because he's got a fucking tea time to, he wants x-rays or something because some guy's in the OR. She does it and whatever, but when she gets back to the house, instead of being a bitch and going right inside because she's tired, she tells that little girl next door that she's willing to, you know, tomorrow we'll do a couple backwards laps around the block. I'll make time for you. And you just right there, you get hooked. Like she's a good character. You care about her. And then everyone out there that pokes holes in this plot line about how did the girl get in the house? Can zombies just open doors? I will battle you and I will (laughs) challenge you on everything. Because again, like we talked about in that episode, I heard in multiple podcasts, they were like, how did it doesn't make any sense? You know, what is the zombies can just walk in the house there is such a comfort level between Anna and that little girl that if the zombie outbreak was going down and her parents bit her face or something bit her face, she took off and her, you know, for whatever reason, her parents aren't able to help her. The first place she's going to run to is next door. And in a tight knit community in Milwaukee, 
back in you know the early 2000s, you're probably not locking your front door because you're in the suburbs and you trust your neighbors. Yep, hundred percent, hundred percent. I just I had to get that off my chest. I was, like, just, I was like, oh man, he's going. He's... Yeah, I wrote some but, really yeah. good notes on this. I wrote, uh, yes, please, all timer. So that's uh, my very uh, in depth notes on this. <laughs> yes, please, all timer. Guys, yes, what's your please, favorite kill in this movie? Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, my favorite kill. Oh, well, well, it doesn't have to be oh, a favorite kill, but right, maybe a kill that kill. just turned your stomach. On the bus with the chainsaw. When it chains and when it ch- when saws it cuts into- the girl in half, yes, that is that was dope. nuts. That is a pretty crazy kill. Um, God, I can't even think of it off the top of my head. I I would just have to say it's not like a gross up scene. I just love when they're on the roof just shooting people, just when they're just like oh, Bert, Bert Reynolds. Reynolds. Tell them Bert yeah, Reynolds. Yeah, Reynolds. Exactly. Like I just love like the target practice stuff. They just calling out the famous people's names and everything. With Andy, I, right? Andy was yeah. The oh, and Andy over there, just Ving Rains up there, just. I just, oh man, I just All love right, it. So I, I've got a gut wrenching kill that I'm glad they didn't actually show us because the original scene was supposed to be a hell of a lot worse than what we got was the baby scene. Oh god, see that's what I mean. I couldn't yeah. think that that yeah. was, scene was that wild. baby scene. All we Jeez. hear is the baby like reach out and scream when you see it's a zombie. It cuts away and you hear a gunshot. That that was much tolerable than what was supposed to be done. Was is the baby eating her uh, his or her way out of the mother? That would have been and so awesome. That would have been fucking that would have been nuts, but I think where it's a baby, that might have been a bit much. But my favorite kill is when Anna and they flip over the bus right after the chainsaw. When Anna goes outside and she sees Steve and she oh, puts shit. the fucking bullet right between his eyes. Right there. So yeah, that was satisfying. Yeah, that was good. Forgot about that. Oh yeah. Uh, but all right, so now that we're talking about movies. And you guys are still here for this ride. We got a few more. And everything we're watching has to do with Halloween. So, Justin, why don't you tell us about your next movie that you like to watch during Halloween? Ah, I get it. I know what it is. All right. So, I mean, this one doesn't, <laughs> doesn't need. Yeah. So, I, I pick Halloween. 78. Um, I mean, how can you not? Uh, the OG, bro. The OG. I OG watched this low just key. because. As soon as I saw this movie, and it's weird, I saw this movie, like, I saw Friday the 13th before this, I saw Freddy's before this, when I finally eventually, I don't know why I watched this one last, when I eventually saw this, I absolutely just fell in love with Michael Myers and every single thing about this movie. This movie has suspense, it has awesome, like, POV shots, just, I love how it's filmed like that, it's, that, that's a dumb thing to say. Um, the All right, boy. I love Can we talk to Justin now? <laughs> How all right, you know what? All right, let's talk about this. I don't mean when when you see it from the killer, you didn't see this a ton then. There was like one maybe one movie, but it did it before. But after this, like so many movies copied Halloween of how it was filmed with it. That's all I mean by the POV shots. For love of God, I gotta stop. I know exactly what you're talking about, Justin. When you say the POV shots, I think Halloween 78 takes what we had in Psycho. To a whole nother exactly. level. Exactly. That's why I said With like the a shower kill before. scene. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. <clears throat> like it's incredible. But this movie and the characters. All right. So what I love about this movie is because I was rooting for Michael Myers. I loved when he like stabbed people against the door, did all this other stuff. But at the same time, I like loved Laurie Stone so much, and I wanted Laurie to uh, escape so bad. So I was like rooting for her. But at the same time, like Doctor Loomis, I love Doctor Loomis so much, and the guy was such a Donald Pleasance is so awesome. So I was, it was like confusing. I like loved Michael Myers. I love the person who's trying to stop Michael Myers. I love like the final girls. I love like a character on each side of that. Like so much, it it was like unbelievable. Like so, even when Michael Myers would get close to killing Doctor Loomis through the season, to, through like the series, I'd be like, "Oh my god, no!" Like Michael, I love you, but like chill out. Like I love him too. So like, let's, it's just, it was just a lot. It was like very confusing. You know what I mean? Like it was just look. There's but, a car and, over there. You can take it instead. Like yeah, take yeah. it instead. Like take me. <laughs> go next door. Like, go vol- next door. I volunteer. Like and obviously the music is just the feel too. Because never mind, just with like the jack o' lanterns, the feel of this movie. I mean, it's, so it's much literally on Halloween. The, open, the opening credits. They're all dressed on, up. The opening, on the credits, opening credits. The and pumpkin. And the the horror thing. movie in just a horror movie. Everybody it, knows oh. that opening credit scene. Right? right? Everybody you know, needs to know that. And just being like a kid, just like eating popcorn, watching that. The carbon jack-o'-lanterns. Like the whole entire feel. You have the teenager feel. There's so much. Oh, I just Dude, and that so Halloween much, like, score that John Carpenter wrote for this movie. Is that a double shot, Justin? 
You could play that. It is. It is. Oh my god! Anywhere in the song. entire world to anyone in any language, and I guarantee fucking T they know what that that score is from. Iconic. Yeah. Every single person ever. It it doesn't even matter if you don't like horror movies. Every single. Person I was in high school, from. and we were sitting in um, like the auditorium where like the stage and all that stuff is, and my buddy Tony O'Brien. Just got up while we were all in there for a study. It was like two or three classes because our teacher was out or something. Walked up to the piano, sat down, and started playing the score. And the whole room went silent, and it sent shivers up my spine. Right? There, there must have been 60 kids in this fucking auditorium so just cool. doing whatever mm. they wanted. Stopped mm. when he started playing mm. and then just listened for a second. And then, and then, of course, dude, like he realized everyone stopped, and he kind of giggled, and then the teacher kicked him off it. Oh my yeah. gosh! Exactly iconic. Um, I'm not even gonna say anything else because, like, you could talk about this movie for uh, forever. But just um, Dude, the kills, the creepiness, the, the stalking, like you said, it just brings. It, just... it brought so much to the horror game with so little budget and so little everything. It was here's a dollar, give me a hundred. Yeah, and they fucking delivered a thousand. Yep. Who's your uh, Who's your favorite character in this water boy? Um. Whatever you're playing, Waterboy's not working. Yeah, it's Damn not it. going through. Yeah, for like, some I, reason, whatever we've tried to play music. I know, dude, time, Sean, try... Sean's tried that like a thousand times. So you guys didn't hear it? <laughs> no, no. There's nothing happening. Honestly, like Justin said, my my favorite character is uh Michael Myers and fucking self, dude. Yeah, oh, yeah. he's a, he's a fucking yeah. badass motherfucker. And, and I'm gonna throw it... I'm gonna throw a curveball. My favorite character in this whole movie is Bob. My man just wanted to get laid and drink beer. Uh, so I mean that scene and everything, like, oh my god! I was gonna say, Bob, she, I'm gonna guess. Bob's doing well. <laughs> the she that well, he's involved in one of the most iconic kills yeah. in horror yeah. history. Is oh. when he pins him to the wall and he does the head tilt. Dude, I love like I just got chills even just thinking of that. Just oh, so oh. head tilt, bro. What were we were talking about? Somebody kill. else did the head tilt. What movie? Oh, it was a re- uh, it was a recent Cabin episode. of the Woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. I was gonna yeah. say it's happening in a few different. Yeah, yeah. He modeled yeah, the, the, the redneck zombie torture family after yes. the way Michael kills his victims. Mm-hmm. When, when he opened the door, he... yeah, he did the oh, head yeah. tilt. Yep. All right. Well, that's yeah. Uh, that's like we'll just stop talking about this because, like you said, we could just go on forever. Because I feel like, dude, we could go alone, nonstop, so. and it's just turning us into children. And I don't know <laughs> Which if Waterboy wants oh, to okay. tell us anything about children because you I've know when children play, they, I mean, you've got seven. Justin's got how many? Uh, I didn't hear you because I have to pee. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're gonna take a break until Justin gets back. This is fun, dude. I'm having a blast. I I like going uh not having to read a, read something. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's nice well, kind of just. Free balling it. I like free balling. Uh, free balling. Ballin yeah, I'm um, free. Free, free balling. Ballin it's a good show. Three when you guys piss on the rim, he hit <laughs> talking the horror backsplash. <laughs> All right, aiming for Cheerios. All right. So now that we're back from our break, Justin, we asked you how many kids you have. Oh, that's an easy one, too. Sorry, my bad. Oh, so you've got two. I've got two. One. How many do you got, Waterboy? Seven. All right. So two plus two is four. Minus- is seven, which is 11. And then if you do the math and I do it correctly, it, it brings us back to 1991's Child's Play 3. Uh, that's That seems about right. That's yeah, a, dude. Quick, uh, quick math. A divided by C subtracted by D oh equals H A L L O W E E N. Wait, it's is it um negative B plus or minus a square root of B squared minus four over four C? I don't know, but whatever this math equation what is happening up with is <laughs> is the prime reason why toy companies go out of business because y'all done been shut down twice for a psychotic serial killer who transferred his soul into a fucking good guy doll. And now fucking because you Charles think he's in a military Ray. school that you can just magically pick everything up and start all over again. Let's release Honestly. the same doll, guys. It, this movie was 
not it didn't hit a lot of people but for me it did i i enjoyed every single kill in this movie for child's play three um i i'm pretty sure justin hates this movie um why do you say that i don't know i just have a feeling well i'll get my time you can keep talking okay maybe not maybe maybe he likes this movie um it brings us to a a, uh military training little place (laughs) and we uh we get a couple awesome little kills here um one of them that uh i definitely remember is in a trap one of those trash compactor trucks um where the guy gets squished in a trash truck which is amazing and uh the grenade of course um what what do you sean what do you think please what do i think this movie I uh, was going to be on my list, but I picked a different movie instead. We talked about this, so I'm glad you picked it because this movie, much like Halloween 6, although it's not a lot of people's favorites, this is one of the first Chucky movies I ever saw. And this movie just resonates with me. And I, like I said, when we talk about like Lost Boys and all that stuff, I wanted to go to a military prep school after I saw this movie because the paintball gun scene, that looked fucking epic. The, yeah. the brotherhood that <clears throat> the little group, like when Sheldon gets brought in, or I, I'm drawing a blank on the little kid's name. It's been a while since Tyler, I've actually Tyler, seen it, so. Tyler. Yeah. When Sheldon and Tyler and uh, the girl, they all kind of form their own little group that click. No parents around. Yes, you have strict military guidelines and instructors and all that stuff. That's whatever. I was more in- enthused with, like I said, the paintball, the drills. Uh, the constant physical exercise, like all that stuff. I wanted to be a part of that after I saw this movie. On and, and then like the 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 carnival that goes on behind it, I thought was fucking epic. Oh yeah. Um, there's just so much in this movie. Like you said, the trash truck scene. Love that's, it. That, that's that's the scene it. that I like. Oh, like really yeah. remember. And one of one my of the favorite I'll... kills. Sorry, one of my favorite kills is when they're at towards the end of the movie. And they drop his ass in the industrial fan. Yes. So Love fucking... it. I was going to say <laughs> this movie is like, a, it reminded me a little bit like Major Pain, if you've seen that movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but with the doll, with the killer doll instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good analogy. Oh my God. I need my to rewatch. My name is Major Pain. I need to rewatch this movie. Um, I think it was a great setting change, like for the whole for like the series. I just can't. I just can't get Major Pain out of my head. Not here. Oh my talking God. horror movies. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Charles Lee Ray. That's all you got, Justin. I'm uh, sorry, Waterboy was throwing me off with the Major Pain thing. <laughs> I was just I, I <laughs> think oh, we God. were both waiting for you to jump I, back in. I'm sorry, I honestly gonna I'm not gonna lie, I just spaced out with staring at the ground. Um yeah, no, anyway, sorry, my bad. I I thought the setting change was awesome. I do think this was a fun movie. I need to rewatch the trash truck scene was awesome. Um, I don't remember this movie wicked, wicked good, but I honestly think the first three child's plays, actually, I'm not gonna lie, I think the first five movies in this series are all solid and i like them all for different reasons but um i do like this movie um that's all i really got i need to rewatch it i don't know this movie i gotta rewatch good. it too i need to rewatch it but i do remember certain scenes of this and i do remember being like i like the story and i do like it so that's all i got for this one and one sean my, has my favorite kill in this movie is and it, it's my favorite kill probably in the whole series, not because of the way he kills them or how they get killed or anything like that. It's when he kills the fucking barber, that dude creeped me out like no one's business. It just so creepy the way he like molested the kids' heads, like, oh yeah, can't yeah. wait to cut off the see, like, I don't, I, I yeah, need to and, 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 and he fucking got it, dude. He got it, he got it, he got it real good. Mm-hmm. Hmm. A little hmm. off the top, a little off the top. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but now that we're on to Child's Play 3, I think this movie was not as well conceived at that time because I think it was, what, two years after Child's Play 2 or a year after Child's Play 2? It was like right after it. Was, yeah. And to go from being like a six or a seven year old to like 13 and 14, 
I think a lot of people just, it, I think it checked out the the watching audience and the viewing audience that was invested because you yeah. went from a child to a completely different actor. It was only one year, one year after. Yeah. Yeah. But while, while we're sticking on that and where we, we say we love Chucky, my next pick is Bride of Chucky. And this Dude. movie is a personal, personal favorite. Holds a very special place, like right over here near my heart. It's near and dear to me. It's like uh, right on the right on the cave for Duncan. <laughs> I, the, yeah, dude, this that movie was. I love, love, love this movie. I, this the, movie, com- the comedy, dude, and horror. Oh. The, the beginning scenes with Alexis oh, Arquette God. and oh, and and Tiffany and just the way she she gets the doll back from the oh, cop yeah. and then kills the cop, sews him back together, staples him, like does everything. Woo. I you love it. The lip ring. Yeah, when she puts Chucky on his stomach and she's like, you know, when he was alive, he would get you very know. jealous. He'd kill a man for even looking at me. And he's like, yeah, what's he going to do? And he turns around and says something. He's like, it's not all about the size. It's how you use it. And then he rips out the fucking tongue ring. His one liners are unbelievable. And the change of the direction for this, for the series here, they nailed it. I mean, all, he was. The transition, just the over the top comedy, was unbelievable. Like sometimes, like when the movie like changes that much, like they don't really stick it that good, stick the landing that good. Dude, this they, they knocked it out. Kill of the it! Park. They kill it. it out of the park. This movie is so much fun. I love watch. Oh my god! Like this could have made my list. I love this so much. Like I love this, and then see Chucky. I love this movie. This this is such a great installment Dude, of this series. the series. Opening scene. When they show the evidence locker, we've got Jason, we've got Michael, we've got Freddie, we've got Texas, we've got everything. Mm-hmm. This t- this just goes, hey, in case any other directors out there, because for a long time, I don't know if you guys know this, but Wes, John, all those guys gave each other like mini shout outs throughout their movies. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. dude, so good. I got to say something real like. What do you got? So I, I was just checking on what's the best rated child's play. And you know what they have up there with the what? highest rated? No. The cult you of tell Chucky me has a it's the, they no, have the stop. cult of Chucky at 78%, dude. Wait. I don't I, it no, doesn't make any the, sense to me. The, doesn't make sense. Wait, what? I I don't know how. I really don't. I know how, dude. You know what happened? They paid Peruvian women from the ages of eighteen to twenty five. That's you know. That's, oh my god! Don't, don't you even, hate it when that fucking happens? That's too? messed up. <laughs> god, guys, god. if you don't know, Waterboy, we we decided to uh, promote one of the videos on YouTube, thinking it would reach other horror fans and like minded individuals, and instead, it reached nothing but Peruvian women from the ages of eighteen to twenty five who don't speak English, even though our podcast is in English. Yeah, this isn't a joke. Like, this actually happened. Like, it shows you, like, the breakdown of it. Like, he's like, oh, I got a really good deal. Like, I promoted this. We got so many views. They watched three seconds. Three seconds of it. Seconds. Complete waste of money. And it showed it was all, like, Peruvian women. We gained no followers, nothing. Nothing. It was a complete waste of money. It was great. And Waterboy wouldn't tell us while it was happening. So me and Justin are out here thinking we're exploding. We're losing our minds thinking, oh, my God, we're going to the moon. We cracked 100 views. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, we made it. And then we're like, wait, why is this all on just Waterboy's movies? Yeah, why is, like, everyone (laughs) on Waterboy's movies? Like, why? Like, You're you're welcome, dude. Oh, my God. That was the greatest prank of the year. Bride of Chucky is just a whole nother level. And I think it, it, it takes the comedy. And almost ditches like the the horror storyline, uh, yeah, all that shit. It ditches that and it goes for the horror comedy, and they murder it from there they, on they, out. They knock it out of the park, like, like pun intended, so good. Dude. dude. Yeah, dude. Just just like you said, the one liners, dude. Yeah. They have a fight in an RV because he's got him at gunpoint, and <laughs> Tiff brings some this. Swedish meatballs and cookies, and they're oh so in love. Like the meatballs and a <laughs> I <laughs> forgot about that. And he goes. Hey, yeah, she's a great cook, but she's not. Uh, she's not a great housekeeper, huh? God, and he turns me. around and he's like, "Hey, Tiff, them dishes ain't gonna wash themselves, huh?" Just so <laughs> so funny. And then they go at it, and, and that causes the, the fucking thing to crash. Tiffany was such a great, like, just a great ad oh, for this franchise. Making you meatballs and cookies, and you can't wash a dish. Like this fight happens while he's still eating what she made. 
It is like even if he so were to get up and wash good. the dishes, he's still eating. Yes. So this glad Jonathan got Tilly be, got added to this. This has so got to be the. I don't know why this isn't the number one. I really don't. I. Bro, the movie is awesome. It's so. Speaking great. of one-liners, and I have to do this because I'm allowed one duck per episode per Justin. Okay. My favorite scene in this movie is when they're all in the honeymoon suite and they're all going at it, and Tiffany goes, "Wait, do you have a rubber?" And oh Chucky goes, "I'm, I'm all rubber, <laughs> baby, I'm all rubber, baby." <laughs> Just, oh, just bravo, bravo! They, they, they did the doll scene, the doll sex scene before. Um, what was it? The what was that South Park that did that the South um, Park movie? Um, I know uh, what you're talking about. Uh, you know, uh, was it Team uh, America or something? something yeah, about, Team like, America, World Police. Yeah, know this. yeah, but Team America. Dude, the, I mean, who directed the Don? Was it Don? Is it Don Mancini? I don't want to put yeah. his name. That, but Man, like, just Man- Mancini. Yeah, like awesome job for that. Like that guy just like took badass chances and he just knocked it out of the pocket. This like and the way right. they controlled Chucky and Tiffany, it still looks amazing today. It's like to have so Chucky, or yeah, it was was it Chuck? No, it was Tiffany. Mm-hmm. Uh, get burned in the oven, and it looks amazing. And then I think it was Chucky that was in the grave, right? Yeah, when yep. he's sprinting back and forth, and screaming and losing his mind, I actually think that was a small person. But the shot where it still looked like the doll, you you can't beat it. No, you can't beat it. So good. so good. And leave, leaving off, you know, since we're talking sequels, since Waterboy did a third, I did a fourth. Why don't we cover all the bases since we did cover an OG and a sixth? Why don't we touch on something that's a second? Why don't we talk right. about Sleepaway Camp too? We are going to Sleepaway Camp. Fucking I don't know why. Things. I don't. I, I don't have know never why. seen Sleepaway Camp. Sean, what? How many Sleepaway Camps have you seen? Wow, this is gonna go well. Uh, wow, <laughs> the thing. So, uh, I bought when we started talking about this. I have every Sleepaway Camp currently still wrapped in plastic, sitting on my dresser. Ready to be it, watched waiting. because when I, it's always been on my like to do list, my bucket list, my yeah. I need to watch the series. When mm-hmm. we started this podcast and we brought up that we should hold off on doing franchises, I wanted a genuine reaction to this movie because I know it is so near and dear to your fucking heart. Yeah, and, and I'll I, tell you I, why I have been all right <laughs> trying not to watch it. So I picked saving this movie. myself. <laughs> So I love Camp Horror so much. I love the Friday the 13th. Just make me so happy. And it's like Sean talked about like the comfort blanket thing for whatever. He, I forget when uh, Dawn of the Dead. Like the, the Camp Horror is like so dear to my heart like that. It's just so much fun for me to watch this. And never mind. Everyone talks about Sleepaway Camp too. Because it was actually, a, a, I mean, Sleepaway Camp. It was a really good movie. Crazy ending. Everyone knows that insane twist ending. And it was a pretty solid movie. But Sleepaway Camp 2, they changed the girl who plays angela and i first saw this back in the day because i'm old when you you had to go to like the movies to i mean go to like blockbuster to look for movies i saw this cover it's a picture of a girl with a backpack on it and it has freddie's glove sticking out there is a chainsaw sticking out and jason's mask and and it says something like make sure you go get all the essentials camping i saw that cover and i'm like oh my god what is this i actually saw this before sleepaway camp so i was like i need to get that this movie is so over the top. They changed it from Felissa Rose, who plays Angela, to Bruce Springsteen's sister. Bruce Springsteen's sister, Pam Springsteen, is Angela. I think that says enough about a, an 80s right. movie. You got a Springsteen. There is a Springsteen in this. And she plays it so over the top. The kill, the, this movie is horror comedy. It switches from very serious from the first one to just... Angela is out of control. And I love it. In the first one, her mo- name is Angela Baker. This takes place five years later. They're at Camp Rolling uh, Rolling Hills. And her name now is Angela Johnson. Like, you didn't even change your first name. Like, you're, like your whole, like, they're like, she'll never know this is me. And on top of this, like, she, the kills of part two, I couldn't even pick part three. The part two and part three are so over the top. They are so much fun. The kills are crazy. My favorite kill in this whole entire movie that was stuck with me. I anytime I go camping or anyone that goes to New Hampshire, all those things when you see like the outhouses and stuff that you have to go to, 
I can't even look at those anymore because she stuffs a girl in the outhouse in this movie and gets a giant stick and keeps pushing the girl down and the girl's head is sticking out and there's leeches all over it and she pushes her back down and then you hear her like like drowning in the crap and shit that kill sticks out for me so like so much she 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 burns a girl to death she cuts out a girl's tongue she power drills a girl to death Someone's throat, all right, in this movie, someone's throat gets cut by Freddy Krueger's glove. That is an actual kill. And I'm pretty sure it's like the person wearing the Freddy glove. In another part of the scene, someone is dressed as Jason. You know what Angela comes out? She dresses Leatherface. She kills a person dressed as Leatherface, and that person is dressed in Jason. This is, <laughs> this place is not, there's gratuitous nudity. There's the, the, every single person is naked throughout this whole entire movie. So it is like so out of the, I'm just going to say, it's like out of, it. it's out of the top <laughs> 80s horror. Like it's just, everyone is naked. Everyone is killing everyone. It is just the awesome camp, campfire stories. It is super meta. Like it doesn't take itself serious. It is just an awesome change of the place. Part two and part three are kind of very similar. I don't know. I, I just love it. And that's all I got. And I know you guys don't have much input because you guys haven't seen it. But well, I, I, w- stuff I was going to say off uh, piggyback off that little scene that you talked about with an outhouse. Now, do you remember what the Hills have eyes uh, scene when they're coming out of the, um, the Porter potty? I don't know if you've seen the new Hills. I, have. I eyes. have. And I loved it. I, I just can't think of it off the top of my head. It's, it's disgusting, dude. They're like escaping out of the Porter potty hole. <laughs> oh, horrible. Man, man. Porter potties. Okay. Oh, just yeah that's yes what is your most memorable scene from this that like you could go franchise or that movie oh it's tough because obviously franchise wise the end of like the end of the the first one is just wild and i know the (laughs) twist so if you want to spoil it you can so when you yeah so when you see the so the first one is just wild like you're seeing this girl kill and everything and then when at the very end of the first one when it just zooms in on her and she's literally you see a penis and you see that the girl is a guy it's just like (laughs) i'm like holy shit is this real like how would that even just happen like i cannot believe it and it's like a crazy zoom in on her face and it's just that is wild and then like i said part two it's just probably that porta potty scene is insane. And part, I want to say part three, someone gets their head ran over with like a lawnmower. Part three is so much fun as well. Um, and it's just a lot, like I said, part two and three is just a lot of campy fun, like singing songs, killing people. It's just, it just gets pretty wild. Um, but I love, honestly, all three of those movies. I love so much. And it's filled with nostalgia, especially if you love 80s, like camp horror, which I do. And, and I've got one more watching. question. What do you got? I feel like we're interviewing you about this movie because I know oh. we're going to do it on the podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But if there's one thing you could change about Sleepaway Camp 2, what would you change to make it better? Oh, God. How do you make Sleepaway? Mm-hmm. All right. So I actually got this. No, you know, this movie was great, but so as, as creative as some this. of the kills, as, yeah, as, you know, put me in coach. We can talk about this. So as great as some of the kills actually were, like, some of them, they almost do the thing where they switch, like, off screen. Like, you have, like, they could have made the kills even crazier. Like, when there's one girl that gets, like, burned to death, they couldn't really show it too much because I'm pretty sure the girl was, like, actually too young and, like, she wasn't allowed to do some of the crazy stuff. There, So, that I think the kills should have – the kills are creative, but they could have shown more on screen and made them even a little more gruesome. I feel like that would even – because everything else, like, just – the over the top ridiculousness they actually they don't take themselves serious so you can't be like oh well the acting isn't good well yeah no shit you, this movie is ridiculous do you think that they did that because of like the like um the producers like they, they couldn't do it if they wanted to release the movie for example like yeah they, like they kills like that pro- it could have been something like that like i feel like some yeah, of the kills because i, I they think should've... back then they struggled with a lot of like pg-13 r and c you know, no ratings and all that yeah. stuff, which I think is just a giant pile of shit because I know they still do it nowadays. But if you're a horror fan and the movie looks good, I don't give a fuck what it's rated. Yeah. And like I said, I, always, I don't I know this movie obviously had to be rated. I just because it was new. I mean, there was just people running around without the tops on like half the time. And it's just so ridiculous. But yeah, some of the I think some of the kills could have even been better if you actually like seen in like a lot of the stuff. You'll see Angela start to do something and it'll cut away or something. If you saw Angela even kill him even a little more, the better kills. This movie would be like a 15 out of 10. 
but fifteen. I, out I know of everyone, 10. Well, I can't fucking wait. To, I can't. And honestly, everyone wait to like Washington. everyone loves Felissa Rose from the first one. And don't get me wrong, I do too. She's an icon. And she's so awesome. She does all the conventions. Like she is incredible. But I don't know. I don't know why like Pam Springsteen doesn't get more credit for these next two movies. Like they're so over the top and ridiculous. Like oh my god, Sleepaway Camp Three. I think it's called Teenage Wasteland. Like just the name. Like like. Oh, I just. Love so it. you just generated more right one more question for me. Oh, what do you got? The transition to Springsteen from from the first movie to the second movie. Is that as smooth of a transition as the Hatchet series when we switched over to Danielle Harris? It is like so. All right. So the Angela, like Baker in the first one, she's definitely more quiet. She's like more innocent and quiet. So she does all of a sudden become like way more extroverted in this one and just like a little ridiculous. Like she's almost like a quiet, like shy girl in like the first one. And in this next one, she's making like almost like what they do with Chucky. She's making like insane one liners. Like, so it's almost like a, yeah, it's definitely like a big change in it. It's like kind of what they did with Chucky. All of a sudden now she's just like out of the top, like ridiculous, like, like comedy. Oh, she's like bursting thing. out of her top. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. Go see these movies, and that's all. I'll just stop now because I'll get too excited talking about them. Waterboy, you got anything to keep Justin amped up and going, or do you want to move uh, on? I think we, I think we got just uh, our one group pick left, right? We have our one group pick left. Gonna, I wonder what it's going to be. I, wonder, I have no idea, dude. That's yeah, it's weird. All right, weird. hack step slash. In case you didn't catch it earlier, because Justin did spoil it, we have a unanimous group selection for one of the most elite. Trick or treat, horror themed Halloween anthology, all concept movies that we love, and that is going to be postponed until Justin gets back to the microphone. I think he's just wanting us to see Sam. Are you back? You saw Sam. You back? I was, right, I was under, so I was next week <laughs> we're covering Waterboy's pick, and that is Ernest Skid Stupid. Woo! You picked that? Yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a good pick. <laughs> oh my god wait why are we laughing because we're doing trick or treat yeah we're doing trick or treat oh, but god, god, god. I love Anna Skirts oh I love it's it. such a good movie though <laughs> I almost picked it because I need a rewatch no shit we're doing trick or treat that's the whole transition here I just lost my mind I'm such an idiot do you guys but have honestly, like any movies either, either one we... would have been perfect though do you guys have any movies before we get out of here that you would consider that people need to watch during the Halloween months. I know I touched one with you guys in the group chat with being the craft. I think that's an elite Halloween atmospheric movie. I know it doesn't take place on Halloween, but the whole witches Mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. I think it's still pretty, pretty dope. I mean, of course everybody's probably watching. It's not even really horror, but you know, Hocus Pocus, of course, you know, Oh, Hocus. I think they're coming up with another one, aren't they? Oh, they God, are, I kind of hope are, not. Yeah. I yeah, they just don't. In, but... in the famous last no, words yeah. of Waterboy, they should have stopped after two. Get the hell out of here, Bette Midler. But, oh, God, the first Hocus Pocus, I, I saw, oh, like, it's so much so fun. So good. So much fun. I love the craft. I love that. So, And then good. we get so goofy. Good. Like, we said, Ernest Gates, stupid, dude. I think Casper. I fucking love Casper. Dude, I loved Casper. The, dude, the, 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 so the live action one with Christina Ricci and Devin Sawa. I love it. Yep. I saw that in theater. I had a, I don't even know if I was like 10. I don't even know what year that movie came out, but I was probably like 12 or something. And I, saw I, don't, I don't know, VHS for sure. Yeah, yeah. that was like, wait, I don't even, that was awesome. And then one of these days, I'm going to get Justin to let me do Hubie Halloween. Uh, one of these days. <laughs> one of these days. I'll do it for like a birthday pick. Oh, you. There we go. Oh, you goofball doing <laughs> Halloween. Oh, you silly goose. You silly, silly goose. goose. Silly goose. <laughs> you dingleberry. Oh. All right, <clears throat> hack stab slash. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I don't know about these two fucking knuckleheads, but I had a blast just shooting the shit about these movies. It's fun, not you know, unscripted, completely genuine. Yeah, lots of colors and sounds. I think this is the longest we've kept Justin involved in discussions. Right before he leaned back and started rocking back and forth. I know. I, very end, like I actually like I barely spaced you, out. Yeah, I think I, usually I think we I get y'all there. fucking. Fat Joe impression, like midway through the podcast, where you just lean back, <laughs> just lean back, lean back. Oh my god, that's. Oh my god, will you please cut all the times I've done that and put it towards that just for for content? Like all the. Time I'm gonna have to watch like... so many hours. Of <laughs> that's all so. This is just watching like. 15 hours of Justin leaning I'll back. I'll just do the. <laughs> I'll just do the hook for the Fat Joe song too, just on loop. Just lean oh. back, lean oh back. God. 
Oh you know how they have like those 10 hours of like whatever on YouTube? It's just gonna be 10 hours oh of God. Justin leaning back. Just Justin leaning back. But anyway, yeah. thank you, uh, Hacksap slash. Follow us everywhere. We're gonna release so much content in October. So do all those things. It's gonna be crazy. Let's go. Push out buttons. Yeah. Love us. Like us. Ask, for, hey, ask yes. for consent first. We'll give Always. it to you. I'm hacky. That's stabby. Just Justin. Have the best day ever. <laughs> Lean with it. Rock with it. Have a happy Halloween. Have a happy Peace. Hubie. <laughs> All right. All done recording, right? Yes. I'm going to release so much. still says recording. Well, how do we stop? We got kids. Oh, I, I hit leave instead of stop recording. Oh. <laughs>